Hello, everyone, and welcome to the playoff edition of the Press Box Preview. I'm Tyler Gabali. He's Scott Foster. And, well, here we are. Everybody is now in the playoffs. Last week, we had eight-man playoffs, and now it's 11, 6, and, of course, the second round of eight-man playoffs. And this is incredible stuff here, and I'm glad we're talking postseason stuff. Yeah, I am too. It's fun. You know, it's the NSA threw everybody sort of a curve when they put everybody playing on the same day. And that, that's a challenge for sure. But it is it leads to, well, you know, it's kind of been 2020. You know, we've had a lot of sports kind of jammed into a short period of time. And that's what's happening on Friday. Lots of games all across the state of Nebraska should be a lot of really good ones. And you know, if you're a football fan, this is Nirvana, man. This is really good stuff. This is fun. Well, this week we have another triple header of playoff football for you on the river, 880K RVN, and then over on Cami Country. But let's get things started over on 880K RVN. It's the first round of the C1 playoffs, and it's the upstart 6-3 and three Gothenburg Swedes traveling to the capital city as they'll play 7-1 and one Lincoln Christian. Kickoff is at 6 p.m., a little bit earlier just because of the drive that the Swedes have to make. Pre-game is at 5.50. Again, that will be on 880K RVN. Scott Foster will have a call on that one. And, well, Scott, things are heading in the right direction for Coach Hakey and crew. They've won five straight. It's unbelievable. It, it really is. Every time we look at that, another cat up here, sorry. Every time we uh, we keep talking about them and the, the year that they've had, uh, Holdridge gave them a run last week, but uh, they, they found a way. They rolled up over 400 yards of offense, and when we saw them at the beginning of the year, that would have been unthought of with this group. They've come up with an offensive formula that works really nice. They're hot, five wins in a row, and uh, this, is, this has really been something for Gothenburg. Now, have they been able to stay healthy all year? I, I don't know if we've really discussed that. You know, they really have. Uh, Owen Geiken was hurt early on in the season, but for the most part, you know, knock on wood for them, they have uh, they've been able to stay pretty healthy. Uh, they're they're they've been able to plug in parts when they've needed to, and it's it's really been a, an amazing coaching job by this crew. Well, to me, it seems it's all about the adjustments, not only by the coaching staff, but also by the whole football team of really just recognizing what they have and what their talents are this year. And obviously they have worked. You know, we talked about that several times so far this season, but my goodness, uh, the adjustments are just key in their five straight wins and now six and three on the season. You know, the, the coaches will give a lot of credit to the players that they've really bought in on this whole thing, on what they're trying to do, which is a completely, you know, different thing than what they're doing offensively at the beginning of the year. They know their assignments. They, they know what they, uh, their limitations, I guess you would say, and it has really been, uh, it's really been a turnaround for sure. Well, they're going to have a tough opponent in the first round of the C1 playoffs. They're traveling out to Lincoln Christian. They're seven and one on the season. Now, when I dive a little bit deeper into the Crusaders, their only loss is at Auburn this season. Otherwise, they really haven't played anybody that's been all that terrific. They have only played one other team that's had a winning record. So, I don't know. Are they tested enough heading into the playoffs? Well, I, I think Eastern football is really good, and I think that even though records weren't great, they've had some good teams that they've gone up against. Um, this is a team that a couple years ago was one and eight, and the year before that they were zero and nine. Um, so they've they've kind of paid their dues, and and they are watching them on film. Now, here's the fun thing, Tyler: both of these teams offensively run an old double wing flex bone offense. So it's but with if you enjoy triple option football, which we don't get to see around here a lot, this Lincoln Christian team is really good at it. They have a great quarterback and Alex Cook that is just the guy that you would want for this kind of offense. Um, they've got a, just a stud on defense by the name of Josh Free. And, uh, you know, I know that they're, it doesn't look like they've played a lot, played a lot, but they are. Uh, they're really good. This is a this is a tough matchup for Gothenburg. So what I'm understanding, probably a lot of running this upcoming Friday. Oh, listen, they moved the time up on this game, uh, I guess, so that uh, it wouldn't be late. This will be a 90 minute game. I don't know what they're you know they're this thing will be fast. Both teams are going to run the ball. They're going to try to establish that. Uh, when you look at when you look at Lincoln Christian, they have only thrown the ball uh, 20 times. Wow. This, yeah, yeah. 
So they're going to they're gonna do it on the ground. Gotham wants to do it on the ground, and they haven't thrown the ball a heck of a lot more. So uh, it'll be a fast one for sure. I mean, we're kidding about 90 minutes. You may have one of the quickest games all year long. Right, right, right. Well, it should be a fun one. It is the first round of the C1 playoffs. It's 6-3 and three Gotham. We're traveling out to Lincoln Christian, who's 7-1 and one on the season. Pre-game is at 5.50 with kickoff at 6. Got to get that right just a little bit earlier this time. Scott Foster will be traveling out early, and he'll have the call for you if you can't make it out to Lincoln. Well, let's transition over to Cami Country. Continue with the C1 playoff format as 6-3 and three Kozad will travel to 8-1 and one St. Paul. Kickoff for that one is at 7 p.m., and we'll have pregame on Cami Country at 6.50. Well, the Haymakers, let's be honest, they have struggled here in the last couple of games. They've lost two straight, including a, a tough loss against a very good Carney Catholic team last Friday, 31-0. And, Scott, their offense uh, was non-existent for the most part, so only 103 yards for the Haymakers in their loss against the Stars. Yeah, you know, the struggles with Kozad's offense has really been, uh, it's just been kind of weird. I don't understand because we saw them all year and they, they had so many pieces and their line was doing good and, and things like that. And it's they've run into some tough opponents the last couple of weeks. You know, Broken Bow's loss was weird, but that was a big offensive and defensive line that caused them some problems there. And, uh, you know, it doesn't it certainly is not going to get easier with St. Paul. This is a really good team that you've seen. And yeah, this is this is a this is a bit of a head scratcher again here for the Haymakers. So let's put the Carney Catholic game aside. Let's be honest. The Stars are good and they're going to compete in C1. They should get deep into the playoffs and potentially compete for a, a, a state title or at least get close to the state semifinals. So that was a tough loss, obviously, for uh, Kozad. But you, you obviously can probably, um, besides 103 yards total, uh, you can maybe forget that one. Now, overall, though, St. Paul, you talked about the Haymakers struggling against big offense and defensive lines. Well, that's exactly what St. Paul is made of. And that's why they've had so much success, not only this year, but in the last several seasons as well. Eight and one on the season. And they have now won eight straight games after starting with a loss against undefeated Pierce. So there's a good loss for the Wildcats. Now they have both beat, or they have beat both uh, Carney Catholic and Adam Central, but it's been the running game, again, going back to the big offensive line that has been their bread and butter, and it's the talented Eli Larson for St. Paul. 1,400 yards rushing and 21 touchdowns. Uh, good luck start Good luck trying to stifle that man. Yeah, and, and, and as you've told me, he may be even better on defense, but he... Uh... Yeah, that, that line is really good for St. Paul. They think this is their year, so they're going to be playing with a, with some momentum for sure and confidence and uh, probably want to really have a statement game when they come out of the playoffs here. And so, uh, yeah, this is, a, this is a really good St. Paul team. It's going to be an awful tough test here for Kozak. Yeah, Eli Larson is just a prototypical uh, football player. He looks just like a linebacker in on this defense. Uh, he's really good at obviously running the football, but I, I was very impressed with him defensively, as you mentioned, Scott. Uh, by the way, if uh, this doesn't help, uh, if you're a Cozad fan, uh, St. Paul's wide receiver Tommy Robaleski just signed a scholarship with Wyoming after having numerous other Division One offers. So all the talk is about Eli Larson. How about uh, giving some credit to Robaleski? who will be playing at D1 Wyoming uh, next year. Well, when you want to run up against an opponent in high school that's rushed for four, one guy is rushed for 1,400 yards, you're going to want to stack the box and try to stop that run. Well, be careful. If you got a guy like Robolesky with that kind of D1 talent, um, you've got to be honest with that defense, and that's that's tough. Yeah, he's really got some great hands, and that's exactly why he's going to play for the Cowboys. Again, it's going to be a fun one. Class C1 playoffs. Kickoff is at 7 p.m. Pre-game is at 6.50. It's 6-3 and three, Cozad taking to the road. They will play 8-1 and one St. Paul. That one will be heard over on Kiamme Country. Meanwhile, over on 93.1 of the river in our final game of our triple header, it is eight-man playoff action. The second round of the D1 playoffs says 8-1 Elm Creek play host to 5-2 Nebraska Christian. Scott, these Buffaloes, as they have all year, thrived last week in the first round of the playoffs on the ground as they beat Hitchcock County 32-14. to They follow the talented Xavier Perez, 278 yards rushing and three touchdowns last week. Man, he is, he's good. He is maybe, 
he's maybe the best running back in our area. Uh, he just has really had a nice year and is playing some of his, the whole team is playing some of their best football right now. Um, they're getting hot when they need to. Nice win over Hitchcock County. It was a good team last week. Uh, this will be another test for them. But uh, I tell you, this is, this is, things are rolling the right direction for the Buffaloes right now. And he was able to bust open a couple big plays. Elm Creek did trail at the end of one quarter, by the way. It was a low-scoring game. And then they rode the coattails, if you will, of Perez. He had three plays over 50 yards, all resulting in touchdowns. And, again, if you're a team like Nebraska Christian, as they can run the ball a lot, we'll get to that in a moment. But if you struggle to slow down Perez, uh, that could be an issue because Elm Creek can also throw the football a little bit, too. They can, and they don't make a lot of mistakes on that side of the ball. And and as long as they can play pretty clean football, control the clock, and, and run it, uh, the, that's a formula that's pretty tough to beat in the playoffs. Now you mentioned them not making a lot of mistakes. They did have two turnovers last week at Elm Creek, so they'll have to kind of get better on that if they want to stay alive in the playoffs. Now, the Eagles of Nebraska Christian, they beat Hemingford in the first round last week, 24-14. to now, this is a balanced offensive attack, and we saw that last week as they had 126 yards passing and 160 yards rushing. Quarterback Dayton Falk accounted for all the passing yards, and he also threw for three touchdowns. Now, they also did have two turnovers, but this seems to be a more balanced offensive flow for Nebraska Christian. But for Elm Creek, it, it really feels like they have some good playmakers that could at least stifle them a little bit. Yeah, they've got good speed, and 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 I'm sure that they're watching film of that Neely Oakdale game from a couple weeks ago, where Nebraska Christian just got beat 52 to 18, I think was the score, and uh, and so I'm sure they're watching that and and seeing what they can do to stop that balanced offense and make them kind of one sided. That's what you. That's what a defense always wants to do. And if you've got a balanced team, you're going against. All right, let's take away one of their legs, and and so Elm Creek's fast enough defensively to do that. Yeah, Nebraska Christian did have two games canceled this year due to COVID uh, during the regular season. Now, their two losses, uh, again, they're five and two entering the second round of the playoffs, where, as you mentioned, to Neely Oakdale and Cross County. Both of those teams, by the way, are still alive and playing in the second round of the D1 playoffs. So I suppose if there's ever such thing as a good loss, well, there's a couple of them right there. Yeah, and it, it's really timing of the loss. You know, I think that the, the concerning thing in that Neely Oakdale game was that was just a couple of weeks ago. So, so what did they learn from it? What did they get from it? If they if they got something better, got better out of it, I think. For instance, our last we talked about Lincoln Christian. They got better after their loss to Auburn. Uh, we'll see if Nebraska Christian got good enough after their loss to Neely Oakdale. Well, it's the second round of the Class D1 State Playoffs. It's 8-1 and one, Elm Creek hosting 5-2 and two, Nebraska Christian. Catch all of the action on 93.1 The River. Kickoff at 7, pregame at 6.50. Well, it's run down other playoff games are being broadcasted on our sister stations. Let's start with KUVR quickly. As Loomis is 8-1 and one on the season, they were able to beat Leighton last week, 52-16. to 16. They just ran all over the Warriors. But they are going to be challenged this week against Sandhill Stedford, who is undefeated. At 9-0, the Knights beat Axtell uh, pretty easily last week, 68-22. to This is going to be a fun matchup in the Sandhills. Yeah, it will. And that's a – I tell you, that's a fun place, whether it's at Dunning or if it's at Thedford. Those are fun places to go, and those boys know how to play good old-fashioned football up there. Uh, so it should be a really good matchup. This has been a great year for Loomis, and and i uh, love to see the Wolves continue. That game will be over on KUVR or KRVN.com online. It's 8-1 Loomis at 9-0 Sandhills, Deadford. Meanwhile, over on Caney B, they have two interesting playoff matchups. Let's start with Scott's Bluff at Aurora. Scott's Bluff struggling early on out of the gates. They have seemed to pick it up just a little bit, but they're going to make the long trek out east, and it's going to be a tough game against the Aurora Huskies. Yeah, you know, Scott's Bluff's been interesting. And early in the year, we kind of, uh, kind of, I don't know if we wrote, wrote them off, but we didn't talk about them very much, and they really picked it up. They're used to long road trips. That's not a big deal for them. I mean, they get to go on the interstate, which is probably exciting. Um, the, I, I guess, you know, the Huskies have played better as of late, but uh, we'll see if Scott's Bluff can reach back and get that tradition of playoff football and, and keep it rolling. This is the time of year they usually do turn up to an extra notch. Uh, other interesting game that can be heard on KneeB.com, mostly just because of how far the travel is going to be, 
Mitchell traveling all the way out to Wahoo. That one is in class C1. That is, uh, I don't know how much farther you can possibly get in the state besides going from corner to corner. They apparently couldn't get Fall City uh, on the schedule there. Otherwise, Mitchell would have made, but yeah, that is a, that's a long trip. That's for sure. And that is, I've gone to, done a few games at Wahoo. That's not an easy place to play. Great, great facility and stuff there, but uh, they know how to play football in Wahoo. So they'll be probably making the trek just about uh, right now, and they'll be getting back in time for classes on Monday. Mitchell at Wahoo, again on KaneyB.com, and also Scott's Bluff at Aurora on KaneyB.com. On 104.9, MaxCountry.com, a couple games that will be in our area, though, in central Nebraska, as Cross County will travel out to Cambridge. And this will be interesting because the winner of that game will play the winner of Elm Creek and Nebraska Christian. Yeah, that's a that's a good one. It's a Cross County and Cambridge. They both have very nice years uh, I think that's kind of a pick 'em game. Mm-hmm. And then also over on 1049 maxcountrycom BDS will travel out to Ansley Litchfield. We know how good the Eagles have been for Bruning Davenport Shickley, but here's a chance for Ansley Litchfield, the Spartans, to knock them off. Yeah, this uh, you got to like BDS in this ball game. They just again, there's that tradition, and they know how to win games in in playoffs. Grouse County at Cambridge and BDS at Ansley Litchfield. Both games can be heard 1049 maxcountrycom And one final game to note, it's KTIC Burwell at Howells Dodge. This will be a fun game to watch for. Uh, Howells Dodge, by the way, I don't know if you saw it. I believe it was their AD posted on Twitter. And was they got a whole bunch of snow there apparently this past weekend. And, of course, they have to scoop all the snow off the field while they were needing help. And apparently they sent out a tweet or something. And like 20 members of the community randomly showed up and started shoveling off all the snow of the football field. So a cool moment there, if you will, on Twitter. I don't know if you saw that or not, but check it out. I didn't, but I'm not surprised. Howells is, they love their sports in Howells, and that is a mecca for sports in Northeast Nebraska. So good for them. Good for them. Should be a fun matchup. Howells Dodge hosting Burwell. That can be heard at KTICradio.com. Well, that'll wrap up this playoff edition of the Press Box Preview. Again, three games on KRVN on 880-C1 playoffs. Opening round, it's Scotthaburg traveling to Lincoln Christian. And kickoff is at 6 p.m. On Cami Country, it is Kozad traveling to St. Paul. Kickoff at 7 p.m. And the 93.1 of the river, it is the second round of the Class D1 playoffs as Elm Creek will play host against Nebraska Christian. Kickoff at 7 all those games can be heard at krvn.com. And here we are, everybody, playing to get to Lincoln. And for eight man, one step closer. For 11 man, they're just beginning the quest officially this upcoming Friday. And strap in, it's going to be fun. It should be fun. Hey, I'm going to Lincoln already. So, uh, you know, I feel like I've, I, I got to win right away. You'll already be there, right? Yeah, you're just getting a taste of it, a preview of it, I suppose. Well, he is Scott Foster. I'm Tyler Cavalli. Thanks to Brian Sadusket for putting together this beautiful video and the audio as well. Good luck to all those student athletes. We'll talk to you next week, hopefully in the second and possibly third round of the state playoffs. This has been another edition of the Press Box Preview.